Welcome to Behind the Badge with your special guest, Lieutenant Williams. Your new source for all things police in the city of Fond du Lac. Welcome back into Fond du Lac today on News Talk 1450 and 100.7 KFIZ. It's time for another edition of Behind the Badge. Lieutenant Williams and Officer Clamper are both here. Good morning, guys. How's it going today? Good morning. Going good. Happy Friday. Really appreciate both of you stopping by. Uh, Behind the Badge, another edition. Same great pr products, right? Same great yes. thing. Um, yeah, before we even get going on our main topic, uh, we have to let everybody know that we're going to have a police department bike auction on uh, on 7-13, uh, so um, July 13th. Uh, and it looks like it's at 4 o'clock p.m. And the 14th of July Thir falls, 13th. 13th falls 13th. on a Wednesday. Yes. So it's going to be right there in the middle of the week, 4 o'clock. So what type of bikes are being auctioned off here? So what happens is uh, we get like a lot of uh, abandoned bicycles that are um, kind of found throughout the city throughout a course of a year. And there's kind of laws that we have to do when we find abandoned property um, and we have to like give as much notice as we can. We have to hang on to it for a prolonged period of time. If nobody claims it after so much, then we sell it in an, in an auction. Like we don't, uh, we don't um, get to keep the items ourselves. We have to, uh, we actually- You have uh, to buy it yourself if you want it. Yeah, yeah, we have to go to the auction and buy it. So um, statute says we have to have that, but it's not just bikes either. Um, we also have property, like unclaimed property that's been located. Um, we've had some interesting items. It's uh. <laughs> It's always uh, kind of, it, it's just very random, some of the items that have been for sale at, at, at some of these uh, events. So does this fall under um, kind of lost and found stuff that was never claimed? Is this like evidence that has been collected? Or what's all considered in this? I guess the kind bikes of, themselves. Kind of all you can about. Most of it is abandoned property that um, it was that we have taken, took custody of and nobody claimed it. Um, and then uh, another portion could be evidence where the person no longer, like you contact the owner and they say, I don't want it anymore, mm -hmm. just get rid of it. Um, so there's there's a small portion that's that's that kind of stuff. Um, but most of it's just like found property unclaimed. Gotcha, so how long does something have to be in your guys' possession for you guys to be able to auction it off? Um, it's at least a month uh, for sure. Um, so. Uh, we usually don't do it every month though. So like uh, things accumulate and we, we, we wouldn't, don't want to have an auction every month. So we actually have accumulated a large amount of stuff. We have a new um, facility, which we house this and that, that's kind of important to know um, cause we have changed our location. We used to run these right out of our police department garage. And this one will be at our storage facility, which is at 371 North Main Street. And people that are familiar with the area might know it's like the old uh, Tuffy's um, uh, building there. But so 371 North Main Street is where the auction's at. And so we accumulate, I don't know, it's been a while since we've had one. So it's probably been at least six months or eight months of accumulation of I don't of remember bicycles. you've ever <laughs> mentioning one before. So it might be the first one since September, possibly. Yeah, it, it definitely could. It definitely could. And, you know, we probably get a little bit fewer bikes in the, the winter because mm -hmm. there aren't, people aren't riding them as much. But um, we definitely have enough to, to do it now. And, um, I was talking to our property guy. We have a really good property guy. He's uh, he's very meticulous with his job. But uh, I was talking uh, to let me in the facility, and uh, we might be doing some advertisement, some uh, some videos. I always want to do like <laughs> like you know like you see those the car videos where they're always want to do something like that. So uh, I think I'm gonna try to get out and do some uh, commercials for the bike auction. Awesome, should be a good time. Look forward to those probably on the YouTube page, I would assume. Yep, yep. Um, hopefully we'll have some time to discuss it maybe a little bit more in depth in, in uh, on this station too, so. Awesome, again, that's still, what are we, three weeks away from that? Two and a half weeks away? Yeah, that away? sounds about right, about two and a half. Um, yeah, July, July 13th. Uh, once again, so you have to register, so it's an auction. So you have to be there at four to get your, to register to bid, mm -hmm. and then the, the actual auction won't start till 4.30. So um, primarily um, bicycles, but there'll be other miscellaneous items. And maybe if I get my advertisement out, we can uh, maybe uh, allude to some of the other items. Cause yeah, like I said, there's some interesting stuff. Like I think we had alcohol going on really? or something like that. <laughs> there's some interesting stuff like Jewelry. I've seen tools there, jewelry, you know, stuff. Oh, that tools. Maybe like tools a, is very often actually. Yeah, where you know maybe a contractor is going someplace and it falls off their vehicle, something like that, or they, you know, if you get like a bunch of recovered like stolen items and and it, it's well past when when it actually happened, 
there might have already been an insurance claim on them, so mm -hmm. they just they don't they don't they don't claim their tools because they've already been compensated or something. So um, those are those are some of the things that might get. So there have been good tools. I remember that. Gotcha. So that's gonna be coming up on July thirteenth. Um, if somebody were to show up to this, like how many, like what's the competition for trying to bid on these items? Are, are these normally well attended? You ever see, uh, what is it, Storage, storage Wars? Storage Wars, yeah. It's kind of like that. There's like a group of people that kind of come to all of them. And like, I, I went to one because I was just looking uh, one year for a bike for my daughter and, and I knew she was going to outgrow it in like three, three seconds. So um, I didn't want to pay a lot of money. And uh, so I, I got in there, I was bidding, and the guy bid against me, and he ended up winning. But then he ended up selling it back to me. He said he was kind of bidding just because he thought that I was bidding for one of this other guy that he just wanted to bid against. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. It was just interesting. Uh, I mean, I got my bike back out of it, but it, it, there's, uh, there's people that, that really know what they're doing. But then if you just want to pick up a bike, you can, you can get one. Um, usually, there are usually a couple of name brand ones which will go cheaper than what you can get them for in a store, but you're still gonna pay, you know, like maybe a hundred bucks or something. Like if there's like a Trek in there um, or other like big name brands, Specialized, whatever, you, you might still be paying around a hundred, but not a thousand, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. And most of them need a little bit of work. And then there's always uh, some that no one bids on and those end up in the, uh, this take this pile. <laughs> gotcha, that's gonna be my next question. If somebody doesn't want something, right? It doesn't go for sale, do you guys, keep the possession of it or you kind of open it up to like throw it out on the street and you just put free to a good home almost or... anything that runs um gets claimed and if it's just in too bad of a shape uh then it go it, i think it just goes in the junk you know sells for scrap because i mean you're talking like they could go for a buck and mm -hmm. like someone's going to just sell that for scrap so gotcha so that's super exciting definitely looking forward to finding out more details of the exact items that will be there on july 13th uh, what else is going on in the police department? So uh, those that tuned in last week, uh, we got our first question of the week. Um, so um, we're, we're going to try to do this new thing where we take a question every week. Um, so submit those questions. You can submit them right to my email. Um, it's rwilliams at fdl.wi.gov. Um, this question um, kind of comes, at, it revo it, it, it's about traffic stops. And I, I think this person, um, to kind of, kind of like, um, make things a little bit shorter. Talked about um, on traffic stops, can an officer legally tell someone that they have to exit the vehicle? You know, you might see like if you ever watch YouTube of all these things where the person refuses to get out of their vehicle and then the officer might like break their window or grab the door and yank them out. And are they able to do that legally was kind of the question. And uh, there's kind of a there's kind of a two part answer to it. Um, but generally, yes. Um, it's not always something we're going to do. Now, if, if this is over a speeding ticket and, uh, you know, we, we could probably easily identify the operator of that vehicle, probably not going to do that. We'll probably just, um, end up mailing that citation or whatever, because the, the desirability to do that is not, um, there. Now, if it's a major offense or something, then we're definitely probably going to up the ante, um, on that. But how that came to be is as most laws are. It goes. Uh, it usually goes to court, and then this. There's two cases that went to the Supreme Court, and I know people are taking notes at home, so I'm just going to mention them. Um, one, one, one of them is uh, Pennsylvania versus Mims, and the other one is Maryland versus Wilson, and uh, they both have to do with: are, is an officer allowed to ask someone to exit the vehicle? And uh, one has to do with the driver, and one has to do with passengers of the vehicle, um, and the the. Um, Maryland one also deals with, can an officer tell someone to remain in the vehicle? And that they can also do that. So um, kind of interesting where uh, people are like, well, I don't legally have to get out of my vehicle. Well, the, the courts have shown that, yes, you, yes, you do. Um, the officer is allowed to order you out of your vehicle. And they say it's due to mostly like officer safety issues, um, but it could be any, any number of things. Obviously, we don't want someone that to be reaching in a car where we don't know what they're reaching for mm -hmm. so it's safer for us to see their whole body out of a vehicle now if you get pulled over for a traffic stop let's say it's a speeding ticket or maybe it's something worse um to search the vehicle there just needs to be a problem with cause or how is it designed for an officer to be able to search the vehicle yeah so it, it's kind of yeah it, it ups it a little bit so um if we're going off this question so I, someone asked me to get out of your vehicle 
Um, and then they want to do a search for me for weapons, um, which we call a pat down search or a frisk. Mm -hmm. um, so a pat down search for weapons, they still need a separate reasonable articulate suspicion to do that. So um, like maybe that person has been known to carry weapons. Maybe they have a large like like bulge on the side of their, you know, where a weapon would be stored um, or, or, or there has to be something else to articulate that. Um, otherwise they would not be justified to do that. Now you're talking about a search for a vehicle um, and we can get really complicated here, but you don't have as many rights as you do at your private home in your vehicle. And there's a, a doctrine called the Carroll Doctrine, which kind of um, was decided by the courts of what those rights are. But you, the officer would need, and you have that right, um, probable cause. So what's probable cause? It's actually more than a reasonable articulate suspicion. So it's, it's you can't define it, but you, you, you have, like the courts have kind of de decided on different cases what it is. But probable cause means that you have enough information to make an arrest at this point. Um, so um, if I can smell the odor of drugs coming from a vehicle, I would have probable cause, um, knowing that that's the odor of drugs, that there's drugs in the vehicle, um, and I'd be able to search that vehicle. Gotcha. And I think I saw something a few weeks back, and maybe it had something to do with something Evers just did, but you can get a DWI or OWI, I guess what it's called, um, in your own driveway, correct? Depending upon the circumstances, if it's in your own driveway, obviously you had to get there, gotten there someplace, mm -hmm. but um, it has to be, it can be private property where you're operating, which doesn't even necessarily mean be driving. Mm -hmm. It means you could have your car on, keys in the ignition, and you're able to manipulate stuff like the uh, shifter, stuff like that. So um, the private property aspect, it has to be accessible to the public. So. Let's just say a person gets intoxicated and goes to back out of their long driveway and decides, you know, maybe this isn't a good idea or they hit their house. And then law enforcement get, gets called because, you know, someone saw them drinking and gets in their car. Well, their driveway is not accessible to the public as long as they don't go on a public roadway. But if you go into like a, a Walmart or a hotel or something like that where it's still private property, not owned by the government or a public roadway, it's still accessible to the public. So that's things that'll be taken into consideration for an OWI. That would be interesting. I'm gonna have to look into that because uh, I actually, I only lost um, to my knowledge one OWI case and it was off that same issue of jurisdiction. Um, I, it was a person that had actually hit someone else's house. So it was in a driveway of someone they didn't know. They were passed out behind the wheel um, and they had someone come into court and say that their buddy drove it into the driveway and then he moved over into the seat behind the wheel at some point while it was parked in the driveway and therefore I didn't have jurisdiction. And even though it was a very far-fetched story because I was pretty sure he was driving, um, I, it did get thrown out for a jurisdiction cause. Now, that I wouldn't use that defense because I think normally, and this was just a, this was just a forfeiture case, it wasn't a criminal case, but uh, I, I don't think that would uh, fly. Um, it was just uh, a technicality on that one. So um, that's interesting. I'll have to look into that. Gotcha. We can chat more about it next time. Maybe find out more details about the upcoming auction on July 13th. Guys, thanks for the time. Thank you. Take care. You're listening to News Talk 1450 and 100.7 KFIZ.